why you had such a bad time. You know, if you don't like one aspect of it, tell us what you didn't like. Don't just say, I hated Klondike, I'm never coming back again. Tell me why you're never coming back. We can't improve it if you don't tell us. All right? When checkout starts, it'll be right after the award ceremony, about 2.30 out of the Point Lodge. We're going to have the checkout packets there. So once we hand out all the awards and say congratulations, you're the troop that won the best at the log saw. After all that happens, we're going to say, everyone who wants to go check out, come see me over here. We'll have your checkout packets. That's how we know when you've taken off. Okay? So when you're ready to go, come to the Point Lodge. That's where the checkout packets are going to be up until about probably 4 o'clock or so. Then they're going to go back to the office. That way, you know, if you guys are getting ready to take off, you can step into the office, grab your checkout packet, and head out on the trails and have a great, safe drive home. Any questions whatsoever on check-in, check-out? Can we write could I hand you Klondike because I was cold? You can write it. Unfortunately, we can't really do much about that. <laughs> Maybe they can hold it during the summer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, as far as for the what is going to be available at camp, you know, I don't mean to pick, poke fun at them, but we've had a lot of out of council troops who have heard of, who've come to Camp Trelawney, they heard about it and they're like, hey, what's this Klondike I keep hearing about? I literally a month ago had a troop from down south call up and say, hi Joseph, I want to know what Klondike is about. And I said, okay. Well, I started telling you information and the, the first question he asked me is, so we're going to be using the tents from camp, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Camp is winterized, which for those of you who haven't been there, means all the tents are down. You're going to see a bunch of skeleton frames for the tents. There's no beds, no mattresses. What is, you know, instead of going out to all the different campsites that we have up at camp, we're going to take all the troops and we're going to be having you guys set up your campsites in the parade grounds. Now, the parade grounds is the area that is covered from handicrafts, where we do flags, to the climbing wall, all the way over to the office past the trading posts and the waterfront area. It's that nice big stretch of open area right there. That's where we're going to be putting the troops. So that's where you guys are going to be setting up your tents. Okay. There is a couple things we need to cover over with that. There's a bunch of tables, especially in handicrafts area, that are tied down to the trees. We need to leave those tied to the trees. They're there for a reason. We have to take all the tables and if we leave them scattered out all over the place, the snow is going to come sit on them and it's going to break them. And now come spring, we're going to have a huge repair bill on all the tables for handicraft. So we ask you to please leave the, tree, leave the tables up against the trees. Aside from that, you guys are, if you want to, you're more than welcome to set up your campsite in handicrafts. It's actually kind of a popular area because of all the trees that surround it, it gives you some natural cover. Also along the volleyball court, there's a lot of good trees there, so those are the areas that are going to fill up first. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, one thing, obviously, since there's going to be a lot of trees in that area, we ask you to remember, a scout is courteous. Okay? That means when it comes time for quiet time, remember that. You know, Instead of running around and screaming and having fun in the snow, rolling down the hills, which isn't a good idea at 10 o'clock at night anyway, for obvious reasons, you know. Be considerate of those troops that are starting to go to bed, so just be aware of that. Most uh, camping sites have a quiet time starting at 10 or 11 at the latest. We, of course, is that going to be the same? Mm -hmm. 10 o'clock? Yeah, quiet time. That's, that's when quiet time is. Unfortunately, you know, you're going to find that troops are going to be coming in a lot of times throughout the night, so they're going to be coming in and we ask you just be mindful, you know, it's not possible for a come in and set up campsite in complete silence. We know that, we understand that. Just be respectful of everyone and not be screaming, Timmy, where's the tent poles? I can't find it. <laughs> no, just be aware of that. No, no snowballs. So as far as what, that's the camping situation. Now as far as water, trash, and bathrooms, very three very important things. Everyone who's been to camp, you know the bridge, right? You know the dining hall? There's that little dumpster pad right over there next to the dining hall. That is the closest active water source for your troops. So you're going to have, as Dave said earlier, with your equipment, you're going to want to bring some sort of water container. You know, you can have it empty, so if you don't want to haul in a bunch of gallons of water on your sled, you can bring it empty, 
and go over there and fill it and just have a couple scouts bring it back. Okay, that's drinkable water, which you can use to warm up on your stoves, or you can use it for your dehydrated food, for your canteens, whatever you need. Same thing goes, the dumpster area is where the trash will go. For any trash you guys don't want to hike out, you don't have to. The dumpsters are there for you to use. You can put your trash in there, it'll be taken care of in the spring. Now, what you don't want to put in the dumpsters is wood that is lit. Okay, I, I, I know that sounds like I shouldn't have to say that. <laughs> yes, there have been incidents in the past. You can take any logs that you, you know, if you did hike in a bunch of wood and you didn't burn it all and you don't want to hike it out, you can throw it in the dumpsters, provided it's not lit, okay? That's the main thing right there. No lit wood in the dumpsters. Anything you don't want to hike out, feel free to put it in. Oh, I'm sorry. Scoutmasters, you do have to take your scouts with you. You can't put them in the dumpsters. Yeah, I'm sorry. You hike them in, you have to hike them back out. As far as conditions goes, all the vents are going to be up along the way from the sleeping areas up to the point lodge. So it's going to be all mostly along the point there. There's going to be a few people up past up past uh, Yosemite campsite into where a scout craft area is. So we're going to be spread out over there. So they're going to be covering a lot of ground. But it's pretty... That is everything I had on my notes. Any questions on any of that? I know we're throwing a lot of information out at you right now. Yeah, I got one for you. Yeah. How big is the snow going to be here? How deep is it going to be? Where? Snow. As of right, as of the last count I heard, there's currently four feet of snow up at camp right now. We're going to answer that question. Are you plowing the, the tented area? Ah, no, we will. I'm sorry. We will not be plowing the tented area. We have our snowcat come in, and it will plow. It will plow the main road, and it'll plow the road out to the point. But the actual area where you're setting up your tents. You're not going to, we're not going to pack that for you. You're going to be packing it yourself. Would you suggest bringing a couple of this couple of shovels, full-size shovels? Or is there certain things that you say this, those are the best? Uh, honestly, with my experience, unless you've got one of those really big shovels like he had there, that, that's good for scooping and leveling, but not good for packing. For packing, the best thing to do is honestly Get your patrol in a row, stomp it down really quick, back and forth. If you've got the snowshoes, that works great. Honestly, most of the time, it's just quick stomp the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got the kids who are really daring and don't mind and got really good waterproof, you could lay them down and have them roll back and forth, but that's exhausting. Oh, uh, what time is polar bear? Polar bear. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has been reading the news lately, but there's no Shaver Lake. So unfortunately there is no polar bear this year. And thank you for handing me this, Dave. I just wanted to bring up two quick things I found real quick here at this meeting. There's two typos that I missed, so everyone, my sincere apologies on this. Open up to page one. On the very top part there, it says important dates, February X. As registrations are due, that's February 4th. So cross out X equals 4. And then back here on page 11, see here, it says on the very bottom in February, attend the 2011 Klondike on February 19th through the 21st. That should actually be 18th through the 20th. So I don't want you to get confused. It says 18 and 20 all over the packet there. And so I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page here. Like I said, I forgot I didn't catch that myself through the spell check. I apologize. And we've got, we want to make sure every unit got one. But we've got, so we've been distributing extras. If you need extra copies, we've got plenty. We can, we can take those back to your units. I'll be around. Okay, we're going to, um, if the town mayors can work their way up, town mayors can work their way up.
we're going to run through. So you know, we've talked a lot about preparation and safety and making sure that your units are are are, are organized and you're keeping track of each other and all that. You know, that's very very much a requirement of a successful Klondike. You have to have that. The fun part is going to be going from town to town and participating in activities and so forth. So we have some of the mayors here today that are going to do just a quick, uh, a quick advertisement for their particular towns. And, and if you want to learn anything about uh, how to compete for the events, this is the time to ask the question. So, Doc, introduce yourselves as you kind of come through. And I'm Doc Pierce. I'm the skipper of the Sea Scout ship. My ship's going to be running the uh, claims office and telegraph office together and um, you guys will be negotiating your claims and when we give it to you you have to use your compass and locate them and then you'll get judged on how close to your location that you are and then you have to send a telegraph back home. You'll be judged for your accuracy in using your compass and uh, the wording on your telegraph and if they're really really good we're going to tell everybody about it and but that's the gist of how the town's going to be run. Are there any questions on that? Do, do they need any special equipment? They have to have their own compass. Mm -hmm. We will not furnish it. And you have to understand how to follow a compass course. We'll give you very little instruction because if you know it all, we'll give you extra points for that. Is that per troop or per scout? Compass? It's per patrol. It'll be, they'll be run as patrols, they will not be run as individuals. Uh, we're just going to be calling ourselves the Claims and Telegraph Office. Okay, it's not listed here, right? No, it is not. We, we have listed uh, kind of a press time when we distributed this on page 14. A summary, it's pretty accurate, but there are some changes. We'll be updating this, making it available on the website and emailing everybody as well. So if we have additional information, and um, this is one that we're going to be adding. You had a question? Uh, same thing, I was wondering what the name of the event was. But. Yeah, we're going to call it that. We're going to be in the town of Skagway, but Skagway is the entrance, and I wanted Skagway because it's a seaport, and sailors should be at a seaport. <laughs> and so we got relegated to running the claims office. There's a little guy. Um, that was really famous back in the Klondike. It was called um, um, Soapy Smith. And so we're going to sort of pattern ourselves after that, that you add water to soap and you get, you'll have Sudsy Smith. And um, that caveat emptor is going to be on our signpost. And um, we're going to follow some of the things that maybe he did. And hopefully you guys will have fun with it. Great. Thanks, Doc. Thank you. Leroy? I am Leroy Squire. I am running the snow cannon event right out front of the, which one is it? Dining hall. Um, basically, the, the objective is to shoot, shoot at the bear cutouts. But I'm also going to be judging you on scout spirit, team organization, and then accuracy and distance as well as which was yeah, as well as following safety rules as well um, because this is essentially a for all intents a live ex live fire exercise i cannot stress safety enough so that's going to be one of the key rules as well key aspects of the event as well what are you shooting we are shooting snowballs basically you make it on the spot i I am not allowing pre-made snow, snow ornaments to be used. <laughs> any questions? Are there any questions? What are you shooting out of? Oh, we're shooting out of air cannons. Uh, basically, pieces of PVC.